Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel for episode 12 of Bumbling Through Birthright. I don't think I can do it with my fingers anymore. I think we have too many episodes. This is the series where I tell you all about our efforts to get through Birthright and Steward Vic and all the surrounding countries without dying. And it's very important that that is an active decision to not die because everything here wants to kill us. If you're not sure what's going on, make sure you check out the link down below for the last episode. But basically, to recap, we almost died by going through the plains by accident, and we found a dragon, and the dragon was nice though, and he dropped us off in the town of Arnorby. For this session, we once again had four characters. We had Roz, we had Rainier, who I think has only showed up once before. Uh, we had Jan and we had Val. Brindis has taken ill, I suppose. She tends to do that a lot. She's got a weak disposition, I suppose. So it turns out that Rainier and his tribe actually usually winter around this town, so that's why he's here, which is great because we haven't seen him for a while. And if you remember from last episode, this was where Val grew up. She left disgraced and this is the first time she has come back. Her grandfather has died and her mother is now the Jarl. The first thing we do is go to the longhouse. There's a little bit of animosity, but it's not terrible. So then we set out to have a downtime week because we all almost died at the end of last session, so we need the time. Rainier takes up some pit fighting, ends up getting destroyed by his father in the last round because he's like, my son, you must be a man, and just thwomps him. Jan does some research in the area, and Val also does pit fighting, and so she's going through and she gets like to the last enemy, which is going to be Rainier's father, and then in comes her mother and goes <sighs> and then decides to fight Val instead. And then Val's mom goes thump on Val, you have much to learn, a little girl. Meanwhile, Roz decides to spend this downtime doing another right spell that he has learned, which is Ledger Domain. So basically what that is, is you cast it on somebody, you take the entire week, you choose someone you cast it on, and then that person can choose to not take damage from one hit until that spell is cast again or until it's used up. He decides to put it on Rainier because we're probably gonna go fight some Ice Jotuns, so <laughs> let's do that. And also Rainier has this really cool like ancestral thing where if he's in a fight and near other people, any attacks on them take disadvantage. So he's probably going to be taking most of the shots. Our Nora B, Val's mother, invites us to go to the hot spring. So everybody goes except for Roz because Roz has a secret. Roz is a woman and nobody really knows. But also in the Cassie culture that would probably be seen as, you know, not Saeem, I don't want to do that, I don't want to be naked with strangers, so that's fine. That was an easy out for Roz, but I mean, I'm pretty sure eventually she's gonna get caught in this huge deception. Although it's not really a huge deception, it's just how she travels, and now that's how her party members know her. But she does have this cool dragon mask that she got from Olak, I don't think I mentioned that last time, so she won't have to do as much illusioning all the time. While we are in town though, all of a sudden the bells ring and there is a full-on Orog attack coming at the wall. So we join with one of the adventuring groups or the army groups and we head out and we win quite handily because for the first time when we've been in battle, like this is the first time that we've actually been there for the battle, other times we've played it but it's been just like with troops elsewhere. So we were with them and now Roz also has level 3 spells including like Fireball which is one of those really devastating ones. Awesome. So it went like super well, very few losses. Good job us. But now we need to head to Mount Herka because we need to go take care of that Ice Jotun so we can unlock the power of Frostbreaker. It takes us about four days to get to the base of the mountain. Nothing exciting happens. The only thing we notice is that the wall here is more stone and mud and sticks than like actual up and down posts. It's a thing that they do and I guess they have an annual wall mudding festival. It's a thing. Who knew? So we head up Mount Herka and as we're going along we like see some smoke coming out. Turns out there's a coal mine. So we chat with the people there and we're like, are there, you know, creatures? Have you heard about Icy Odin here? And they're like, the only thing we've really heard about are uh, winter wolves and they're terrible, so avoid them. But maybe there's Icy Odin because 
maybe that's why the people that go missing have gone missing. So we set up camp there for the night and then we decide to head off and we decide that the best case scenario is to avoid these winter wolves because they'll probably kill us before we get to the icy ocean. Jan and Val are pretty stealthy so they're able to sneak through. Roz has illusions so he kind of makes himself like a little illusionary box so he looks like the surroundings. I'm sure it's fine but Rainier because he's like a nomadic tribesman he just covers himself with wolf dung that he's found and he's like we're good. And as much as we made fun of him it was super helpful because the wolves were almost on to us but then they kind of like smelt that and they're like oh maybe we don't need to worry about this. So we managed to get up to the top of the mountain where the icy ocean is without getting attacked by these wolves. Thank God. So up on the top of the mountain, kind of in between some mountain peaks, there is a little cottage. It's made mostly of ice. I think it has like a bit of a thatched roof. And then for a door, it's basically got like a mammoth skin, fur, whatever there. That That's the door. It's not a real door. Ice Yoden apparently don't really craft. So it's just like, yeah, I got some skin. We come up with an extremely elaborate plan to take care of this guy. So Jan sneaks into the house and climbs up above the door and pours kerosene over the, that skin because we're going to light it on fire. And then Val ties a rope from one side of the door to the other side about where we guess knee level would be or just below for an ice yoden. And then outside we make a heck of a lot of noise. So when this ice yoden gets up to kind of come out, he goes to reach to move his door and Jan drops it on him and so he's like, oh, what's going on? And he trips over this wire, fortunately goes down, and then Roz lights him up. Yes. Stage one of the plan going very well. Roz had also picked up some fire breathing potion a couple of sessions ago and so he gave that to Jan so Jan was also able to blow fire from behind and then Roz had another fireball so that took out the giant pretty quickly and then with one last toll the dead which is like such a great spell it just makes you like hear loud bells in your head and you like drives you crazy and hurts you and in this case killed the ice yoden so like Roz kind of took down that icy Odin. I mean, other people were definitely involved, but Roz got like the opening blow and the ending blow, so good job, Roz. And now Frostbreaker is active, which is super awesome, and any time Val gets a crit with Frostbreaker, she can sever a limb of her opponent, and it just immediately makes me think of Monty Python. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. It is but a scratch. You know, maybe that's just me. There's also lots of treasure and other assorted items up there, so that's great because we just got a little bit richer. So we go through that stuff and then we decide, well, I think it's mostly Rainier that decides he wants to fight a white wolf. He wants to get the pelt. So we take like this bag of meat that we find in the Icy Odin's house and we bring it out kind of to the middle of the field or whatever where we're fighting and we light it on fire and we kind of lay in wait waiting for these winter wolves to show up. Well, seven of them show up. There's only four of us. We've heard that these are really terrible. And one of them gets caught in a trap right away. So Rainier and Roz are kind of on the side of, why don't we just wait till they finish eating? They'll leave their buddy stuck in this trap. It's fine, we'll get the skin from that. Val is like, ah, I can go either way. And Jan's like, I'm just gonna roll to see. And so we end up attacking them, which almost went really, really terribly. Val went down, we all got pretty, like, I, I, they're getting close to me. I, I had a solution. Roz was going to use Thunder Wave, which was potentially going to cause an avalanche because, I mean, when things get close to Roz, Roz can take like one, maybe two hits, so avalanche it is. <laughs> but fortunately, they managed to take down the wolf that was near me. I managed to take down Jans's wolf, and even though Val did go down, she was fine, healing potion, blah, blah, blah. But we're all hurting a little bit, so once we get down the mountain, it's off to the nearest town. And that town is Dryanserby. That doesn't sound right, but that's what I wrote down. While we're there, we're just kind of wandering around, and we hear, or I think we met this guy that's just like covered in mud. He's like this eccentric guy named Fergus Boysenby, and he's also known as the Mud Man. And I didn't mention this earlier, but I guess when Val was growing up, her grandma would be like, beware the mud man, beware the mud man, the mud man will come after little girls who don't eat their vegetables. And just before we left our Norby, Val's mom said, 
beware the mud men and Val took that as hey we're all good like mom's making these jokes again I can come back home well but what if there's a real mud man so the mud man has walked off but maybe we need to go find him and see what's going on there next we get a raven from hauling Holman. it's from Hal Deer, but he's actually forwarded on what Vardigan sent to us because we weren't around and it says that King Fulger in the bandit kingdom is mustering troops he's got irregulars and he is sending them off east and we're kind of east but also in the back like north part of his province is the lady that we have kind of allied ourselves with that is sending us the wood for our wall and we've kind of you know like I said got an alliance with she's kind of northeast so Vardigan's gonna try to figure out where they're going but I think we should probably get back to hauling Holman so we can get ready in the event that they're coming for us and with that that is the end of that session if you did enjoy this make sure you hit the like button down below and also subscribe so you'll know when the next one comes out thanks for watching and I'll see you next time